I kind of gave us a minute or two to get started because we actually have a ton to do today. Well, that's what happens when everybody takes off to go to the soccer game and doesn't come back. Yep. Yep. Seven dwarfs. Isn't that what they call them? When they walk back and forth between the Mayan, they sing the, the, I think it's, I don't think they call it a limerick. They call it a, a okay, so we did product rule on Monday. Yesterday we did, uh, well, nothing. And uh, we, we had problems up on the board and people worked on homework questions for product rule. That's all we did. And uh, so this is the other half, quotient rule. And what you're going to find is it's just like product rule, where the actual derivative isn't the hard part. Where most people have difficulty is the simplifying. So the algebra of the problem is where more people have difficulty than the actual calc part of it. So quotient rule, there's basically two main ways to memorize it. Um, if you memorized the product rule as fg prime plus gf prime, then you're probably going to want to memorize the quotient rule as gf prime, like you don't have to have correct notation, gf prime minus fg prime over g squared. Now, it can be partially slightly confusing because these are reversed order from the product rule. I kind of wish they would teach the product rule in this order so that you would know that memorize them the same. But obviously, the main difference is that there's a subtraction in the middle. And then the quotient rule also has divided by g squared. f and g just refer to the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction. So anytime you have a fraction and you're asked to find the derivative, you can use the quotient rule. Now most people only use the quotient rule when there's variables on top and variables on bottom. But it would technically work for any fraction. Whether it's a number, whether it's only partially variables, whatever. Uh, the second version of the quotient rule is for people who are much better at memorizing things like with uh, lyrics or sounds. Uh, what do they call those? Auditory learners, right? So the top of a fraction they refer to as high, the bottom of the fraction low, right? And so the derivative is low d high minus high d low over low low. <laughs> so low would be, yeah, low means the original bottom. It bothers me that it's spelled low here, but not spelled low here. But low means the original bottom. D high means D as in derivative of the top. D high would be the derivative of the top. High would be the original top. D low, the derivative of the bottom. And then low low would mean the bottom times the bottom, or bottom squared. So these have the same information, but they're presented drastically different. Um, and honest, during the AP test, you absolutely will see people mouthing this to themselves. It's stupid, but it's easy to memorize. So, um, I'm just, that's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, isn't it? It's got to be. Where they go back and forth between the mind and they're always singing their little song. Like Sleepy, Doc, Bashful, whatever. Grumpy. Yeah, there's seven of them. 
So, low D high minus high D low over low low. Uh, I will pretty much always, I will pretty much always use this one that I circled because I was never a person to learn it by song. And I have yet to teach the quadratic formula in a song. I know some people go by it, they love it, they swear by it. I 100% will not teach that. Quadratic formula. No, I'm not singing it. It goes to Pop Goes the Weasel. Wait, do you really not know the quadratic formula song? Can somebody sing the quadratic formula song here? It's quadratic formula, but it goes to Pop Goes the Weasel. And that's how a lot of people memorize it. Oh. Okay, we are going to start with Vincent. You're closest, it works. Okay, to do the quotient rule, we need F, F prime, G, G prime. So what I usually have everybody do, whether it's product rule or quotient rule, is start off by finding those four things. So I was hoping you could help me figure out some or all of those. Okay. Uh, for G, I got X minus 5. For F prime, I got 6X squared. Whoa. Are, wait. Are, okay. Are you, you're going to random order here. So wait, F prime was what you were reading next? Uh, yeah, 6x squared plus 8x. And then F was 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus minus 7. Oh, <coughs> because you just went and wrote the formula right away. Yeah. Yes, OK, I got you. And then G of prime, I got 1. Perfect. Those are the correct four things. Um, you absolutely are 100% allowed to just write down the parts in the formula, you don't have to do this that I'm showing you. This is generally just what I do for most people at the beginning of product rule and quotient rule because it's easier for everybody to try to set it up with individual pieces rather than trying to do it all in their head at once. But you absolutely are allowed to just write all the parts in. Go ahead. Um, So when you say multiplying, you mean fo like FOIL? Yeah. Yes. You could synthetically divide these or long division these. Um, but generally what happens is you'll still have a remainder that may or may not still need to be quotient ruled. So it's not as much of a time saver. So that's why they usually don't do it. Okay, so give me a number. We'll move it on to somebody else. You did excellent. Uh, 18 is, that, this is not third hour. <coughs> Audrey, uh, you didn't volunteer yourself very easily there. Um, we waited to like found you and verified it. Okay, thoughts on what we should do? Are you trying to ask a question? Uh, yeah. What's your question? How do you get G prime? So when you have G being one X minus five, the derivative of 1x is just going to be 1, and then the derivative of 5 is 0. Perfect. That's what I was waiting for. Uh, F G prime. You were probably waiting for me to write, but I was. Um, by far the easiest part to forget is to write the bottom, like over G squared, because you're going to be so used to product rule that you're going to forget that there is a bottom on the quotient rule. Uh, okay, so over x minus five squared. 
Um, I'm going to erase these four things on the right so that I can move some parts around because I absolutely need to talk about the most common error. And I'm not going to ask people about it because some people don't, probably don't want to be identified as making that error. Come on. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, it's going to be easier to rewrite it. I wanted it all on one line. Thank you. Um, one, just get used to writing, uh, using a lot of paper this year. Yep. Oh, I guess, never mind, because it's in your packets. Uh, well, you're going to use a lot of paper in the packets, so whatever. Okay, by far the most common mistake. Someone is going to try to cancel x minus 5 and x minus 5. Cannot do that. Does anybody, without calling on somebody specific, does anybody remember why we cannot cancel the x minus 5 and x minus 5? Because they're not attached as an operation. They're attached as a minus sign. Okay. That, I mean, yeah, there's not like a great way to phrase it. The only way we could cancel an x minus 5 is if that x minus 5 is multiplied towards the entire top. If that x minus 5 was multiplied towards everything else, then these could cancel. But by far the most common mistake, it, like an algebra mistake, is that on a test, somebody's going to try to cancel those, and then that absolutely kills your problem. Because from then on out, it's not even close to correct. So you could cancel it out? Cannot. I don't even say it. If you say you can, you're going to accidentally do it. No, no, say like you're multiplying x minus 5 to get it to Can do that. But it's x plus 5, and if you cancel it out and do the negative one again. No, you're thinking 5 minus x. Oh, so when it was 5 minus x, not x plus 5? Correct. It would be x minus 5 and 5 minus x would cancel for a negative one. OK, so the downside to quotient rule is it pretty much is just a ton of simplification. There is nothing in common from left and right. To save time, I'm not going to do this one with you because there's not going to be anything that's going to reduce. The only thing we would look for at the end of the problem is does, can I factor x minus 5 out of the top? when it's simplified. I'm just going to tell you on this one, we can't, and if we could, you wouldn't be expected to. So you're going to have to foil these two out, combine it with this one, and then lastly, this minus sign needs to go to all of those. Every quotient rule has the minus sign there, and that minus sign is going to need to be distributed on every one of these problems. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Sorry, it wasn't you. What do you do after that to find the derivative? That is the derivative. Just get that? Oh, uh, well, technically, what I have written is the derivative as well. It's not simplified. But the simplified derivative would be us foiling out these first two parentheses and then combining it with negative 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7. And then just combining all the terms together. And if, for some reason, that happened to factor to x minus 5 times something else, then we could cancel an x minus 5. But on this one, the parts there aren't compatible. So do you just leave the denominator, or do you foil it out? Oh, good question. Didn't even think of saying that. You, may, you can always just leave it. Um, if you want to foil it out, you can, and it wouldn't be wrong. Um, but honestly, if we ever use the formula, x minus 5 squared is often easier to use than the foiled out one. Yeah, I didn't even think of saying that. OK, let's, let's try b. b actually, I feel like, is, is going to work because we're going to be able to simplify and do stuff. Polynomials generally don't. 
Um, kind of opposite than normal, to be honest. Uh, Andre, you get to choose the person. Um, nine. Ruth. Yes. You're nine. What do you want me to do? It's a problem. Um, I mean, I can give you some guidance if you want. I just thought I would let you try to tell me what to do, and I, I, if you want guidance, I can give it. So, what would you do first? <coughs> I would find the four parts. Yeah. Sure. Which one's F? Which one's G? Um, F is equal. Good. G is x squared plus one. Good. And the uh, derivative of of G would be uh, x one with x. Two x. Sorry, two x. Yeah. And then the derivative of f would be um, the exact same thing. Yeah. Yep. That's why I think this one is most definitely going to simplify because f and f prime are actually the exact same thing. So we're going to have the e to the x in both halves. Okay. I don't really have a lot of space, which is, and you, it's not like you have much more. I'm going to have to just write the parts in here because otherwise I'll never be able to fit everything. So we've got g. F prime minus F G prime all over G squared. <coughs> now, when I was saying they'll have something in common, I'm, I'm referring to the first half and the second half. The first half and second half each are multiplied by e to the x. And so I'm going to factor e to the x out. If I factor e to the x out, that's going to basically not cancel it, but pull it out of both. I'd be left with x squared plus 1 minus 2x. Now, if you can do all of that simplification without the brackets, you go ahead. I generally like to write the brackets there so that I can keep the parts separate in my head. There's all sorts of ways you can factor and, and write your notation that are all correct. Um, I usually just try to write my notation so that I can keep things organized for myself. Why are you keeping the e to the x? Aren't you canceling it out? No. I'm factoring it out. So, um, uh, let's say I have not squared. Um, let's say I've got 2x to the fifth minus 4x squared. Both of these have a 2 going in them, and then both of them have x squared in going into them or in common. And so I would divide both of them by 2x squared. And then whatever I have left as the answer goes in the parentheses. So up here, we're doing the same thing. But what we're doing is each one of the terms, I'm going to divide by e to the x. And then whatever I divide by goes in the front. And then everything that's left over goes in this second parenthesis. It feels, way, it feels very different, even though it's the same thing. Most everybody's really good at doing the bottom part in their head. But factoring is the same no matter how complicated it gets. It's, it's definitely going to be practice for you to do all the algebra work. Um, nothing looks like it cancels from top to bottom yet. The only thing left I have to do is to simplify this bracket. And I would simplify this into x squared minus, oh shoot, I still have more to write. Uh, that factors. This factors into x minus 1 times x minus 1.
You are absolutely going to find in this section that the calc is the easy part, the algebra is the hard part. So this is the answer I would kind of expect. Yes. <clears throat> Depends what kind of question it is, I guess, too. So our, our goal is that we're going to be using the answers to our derivatives in parts of problems. And so the farther you can simplify, the easier the derivative is to use. So like this one that I have circled would be easier us, for us to use than the previous one. Yeah, what were you trying to ask? I figured it out. I was trying to figure out, like, I, I didn't know if it was more like the times x minus 2 x plus 1 or I factored, but I didn't have room to write the factors. So it, it factors into x minus 1, x minus 1. <coughs> and since they're the same, I can write it as squared. Maybe I wasn't going to use actual, like, just kind of, it's Weirdly enough, this is far more practical than anything you ever did in like LG1 and LG2. Uh, and when I say practical, it depends what major you go into. So calc is just the very, <coughs> you learn all the basic ideas of calc in calc AB. Derivatives, integrals, and then let's say you go into pharmaceutical something, something I don't know, I don't even know what the majors are called. So like you're the people that make the drugs. What is that? Uh, what's that called? No, it's not a pharmacist. Could be. You're the people that actually make the drugs. So. You need to design how fast that that drug would go into the blood system, or in the blood. And so you have to use derivatives because they stand for how fast something changes, like the rate of change, to determine when would be the optimal time to do it. So whatever, whatever major you go into makes you take a calculus class that is geared towards your major. So Calc AB is just a generic one, and then when you decide on a major, they teach you how to use the Calc towards your major. So this right here, I don't know. I mean, like, I never ended up going into anything. I, I started as school as engineering and computer science and graphic design because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I did one class that was geared towards engineering, like a Calc engineering. Um, and that's the only one I even saw examples of. But I know they offer them for each major. It's a fair question. Um, the, what the final answer that we got on B, how'd you get x minus 1 squared over 5? Uh, it's just, you're supposed to know that one. Um, it just factored. Okay, should I? How does quotient rule feel so far? I, it's not like we've done a lot of them, but um, do you feel like you? My guess is you could probably try one on your own, and then the hardest part would probably be the simplification. Let's try D. Which one? D. Yeah, try D. D actually probably doesn't have a lot of simplification. It might, but it probably doesn't. Oh, well, you're in luck. I recorded it. And you also have the completed notes. <laughs> I don't have any room. But yeah, I, the completed notes are the completed notes are in Schoology area too. asking me where you put your sheet? 
Oh no, I gave I gave everybody a separate sheet that had all the derivatives on it. They are in the packet as well. Um, probably section four. X squared sine X. Not X cubed. I don't think you guys have gotten very far on D yet. Yeah, I have actually. Mm, good. I wrote, down, I wrote down what S. Wrote down. Did you start it before we said to try? Okay. Well, you're getting off task real easy today. No, I'm not. I have three kids. You have kids? <laughs> yeah. No, you said a clear two. Where did you get the where did you get that I never had kids from? I never said that. You never talk about them. There's no pictures. I don't like pictures. How old are they? Fifteen, seventeen, nineteen? There's no pictures. He doesn't wear wedding rings. Oh, I'm not married. I understand. I understand what you're saying. I, I'm not a big person on putting pictures up. The other two go to Woodbury. Woodbury? I live in the Woodbury boundary. Yeah. They're not allowed to come to East Ridge. My oldest is a daughter. The next two are boys. Are they taking Calvin? Um, my middle son is, yes. 10th uh, grade, 12th grade, sophomore college. What's the 12th grade? Calc. Yeah. I get to do Calc at home as well. Calc is such a blessing to have your dad being a Calc my uncle's yes, he doesn't want me to help him a lot. Really? I wonder why. Would you, do you go to your parents all the time to ask them for help? Well, he does. Saying. <laughs> okay, who should we go with? Uh, wait, now I can't remember who got called on. Ruth, you went last, I think. Oh, did she leave? All right, pick for her. Elijah. Okay, so I wrote down the first step of the kosher rule, because I wanted to make sure you guys had that correct, if anything. How should we go about trying to simplify that? As long as you don't tell me to cancel one plus cosine x. Uh, <laughs> you mean what, the next step? Yeah. Sure. I wasn't expecting you to tell me the final answer. Is that what you were thinking? No. Okay. Yeah, cosine x. Plus cosine x squared. Nope. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Cosine squared x. So if you write cosine of x squared, virtually everybody's <laughs> going to think that x is squared instead of cosine of x. You can, put it in a you can put it in a parentheses and then put the squared outside the parentheses. This is just how they usually write it. Say it again. Uh, plus, plus, plus sine x. Plus sine squared. So um, this minus sign right here kind of separates the halves. And then we've got sine of x times negative 1 sine of x. So then this would give us plus sine squared x. Are you OK with that part? Uh, yeah. And then yeah. Did you kind of accidentally multiply times two things or something? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, do you uh, pick my number? Uh, 17. Abby. Uh, yeah, you got called on. I was hoping you could tell us if we could do anything more or what? No. Yep. Again? Yep. It'll be obvious once you oh, see it. Yeah. Squared x plus prime squared x is one. Correct. Sorry, what? Yeah. Yeah, we use it a lot this year. You want to keep going? You want somebody else to go? I want Kendra to go. Okay. Okay. So then, pretend to pick 11. Got it. Uh, 11. Can you factor out a negative 1 at the top and then cancel the bottom or cancel 1 in the bottom? Like, so it would just be 1 plus plus 1? Does that not work? Uh, I'm not sure I followed you. It might work. You cancel out the top and the bottom, so it's negative 1 on the top. Yes. And then you do 1 over 2 times squared. No. I'm just writing what you're telling me to. Wait, is it wrong? Just finish telling me what you were saying because I wasn't following you. And then you, it's just one plus plus one x. No longer squared. Yeah. You're very close. So where you're confused is you're thinking that these are written reversed. Oh, if you have some subtraction. Correct. Yeah. Um, so it's it's positive one on top. Yeah, yeah. But if it would if it was plus sine x minus one and one minus. Correct. Correct. Nope. So that, that'll be as simplified as you can get. Go ahead. So because it's addition, it doesn't matter what order you write it. So you can write cosine plus one, or you can write one plus cosine. And then you've got the same thing on top and bottom. The bottom has two of them, so we just cancel one. It's not because they're written reversed or anything. That, that's where Kendra made the mistake at first, is she thought it was negative one because they were reversed, but that only works for subtraction. No, good. Um, trig, by far trig is the one that has simplification a lot because so many of the trig things go together. And especially quotient rule, we could have done this problem differently and still gotten a different answer that was equivalent. Like, we could have rewritten the original problem. No, never mind, I'm not going to bring that up. Okay, do you feel like you should try C on your own, or should we move on? I don't know which, uh, you said sure, but I don't know which option that was for. Can we do it, can we do it, and then... Yep. The goal, the goal on C, if you're trying it on your own, is to see if you can simplify it all the way. The, the original derivative is not going to be difficult. There's, there's not much there. So just wrote it. I'll I'll just tell you from past experience, this one feels like there shouldn't be a lot to do. But because you have a fraction within the numerator that's a complex fraction, and then there ends up being a lot of stuff to do. It'll, it'll simplify down, okay, but it's a lot more than it feels like it should be because there's a fraction in the numerator.
The highlighted answer is definitely going to be what would be expected to be written. Um, or maybe what I should phrase it, that would absolutely be the answer that's written for multiple choice. Why didn't you add the x over x constant? I had the common denominator, ln of x, so that because the first term was a fraction, the only way you can get it out of being a fraction is if you common denominator, put them together, and then take the top fraction times the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. You definitely look like you have a question on that. Wait, so that's like one fraction of the whole? Uh, where are we speaking to about? After the e to sign, that's all one fraction, the x minus 2 minus mm -hmm. l minus, minus x over the Yes. So this is a fraction on the top divided by, and I wrote the bottom as a fraction to kind of make it easier to work with. Because if we have a fraction divided by a fraction, then you do keep, change, flip, KFC. KFC doesn't really fit it, but I call it KFC. Uh, nothing really goes together either. I mean, like it. The problem is, is not difficult, but the parts that we were working with are not compatible. Like ln of x and, and a polynomial aren't really compatible. So all of their parts themselves, we just kind of have to like mash them together, and, and that's how we have to do it. Okay, we have 10 minutes left. I've got two options. One, um, I can give you the rest of the notes, but I don't, I don't want to put them on you like straight to sleep. I, I feel like a lot of you have hit your maximum on brain capacity this hour. That's the look I'm, I'm getting when I wrote that answer up there. Because there's, this isn't the end of the section. The end of the section isn't like crazy hard, but it's still more. And I feel like we would do better if I let you guys try to start the homework questions, because there's quotient rule in the homework. And you could probably get three, four of them done in class. And then tomorrow at the beginning of, oh, you know what? I have the homework set to be due tomorrow night, but I'll change that because we're not even done with the section yet. Um, I forget the wording they use. Uh, I was going to call it second derivative. Higher order derivative. Not difficult, looks difficult, but it's not difficult. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually easy, but so there's a couple things we have left to go over. My pipe dream of having the test on Monday will not happen, like let's be clear on that. I don't know if you guys were worried about it or not, but it's not happening Monday. Um, no, no, see you guys should be cheering for tests being earlier. I know you're not going to think this is the easy part of the year, right? We don't want to get towards the end of the, the units and have to feel like you're rushed on the crazy hard stuff. That's where you want to go really slow and do little bits at a time. 
This feels hard right now because you're just getting adjusted to it. It will feel very easy soon and you'll wonder why we went so slow. But we're just going as quick as you can. Um, my guess is the test will be shortly after election day. Because if we originally were trying to have it Monday, we're not gonna be in school Tuesday. So it's either gonna be Wednesday, Thursday, or Thursday, Friday, because it's two days. After this. What? Today's only Wednesday. Oh, 2-7 is much quicker than 2-6. Six. 2-6 six is, is almost like two, three sections in one. And I, I'm, I do not want to rush this one because you use it all year long. 2-7 is pretty easy. This is by far a majority of the work in the whole unit. Okay. Um, I would try some quotient rule ones in your homework. That would be that would be the goal you should want to do. 